This is the second video in a series on crowds in Houdini. In this video, I continue from the last one. The last video focused on setting up agents in the scene. And now this video will take those agents and plug them into a .NET to start cooking a crowd simulation. Please check out the last video if you haven't already. It'll be important for you to know how the agents are prepared before you start the crowd simulation. And the last videos in this series will be controlling the crowd's walk path. The next video is on avoiding obstacles. I'll be creating walls around my terrain to prevent the agents walking off screen. The last video demonstrates how to plug in a walk path to influence how the agents walk throughout the confined terrain. Now that we have this all, uh, the crowds all set up, here comes the fun part. We can start setting up the crowd simulation. So let's drop down the geometry here. Crowds of dot net, I'll call it. We don't need to render this because we're going to use the dot import node and bring all this simulation data into the crowds node or back into the crowds geometry node. So if you've seen my other videos, you know that I like to bring all these geometry into the .NET object here first. So this is just for organizational purposes. You don't have to do this. Crowd agents, uh, crowd source. I'm just going to collapse all these. Uh, the crowds. Now we want to bring in the source here. So we're going to bring it here. And then now I want to put the .NET. Oh, and a null. Sorry, I forgot the null. Out crowd source. So since we're trying to build a crowd simulation, we need the corresponding crowd solver. We'll probably need gravity. So we can hook that up here. We're just going to set up everything that we know that we need. And every single time we use a crowd, uh, we have a solver, we need the respective object. So we have a crowd object. Just like if you're doing a flip simulation, you have a flip solver and you have a flip object. Now we also have to bring in our walk cycle. So in crowds, there's something called a walk, uh, sorry, crowd state. So we're going to name this walking because that's the name of our state. So it'll pick up. So in this crowd state here, it has a dollar sign OS, which is uh, the name of this node. And since I've renamed it to walking, the word walking will be the value for these parameters. Dollar sign OS is a Houdini expression that gets the name of the current node and uses that as the value of for these parameters as the name of the state and as the name of the clip. So it's important that we named it correctly over here. The a So there's four uh, four inputs into the crowd solver. The first one is the crowd object. So we already have that hooked up. The, the corresponding object nodes for every single solver usually goes into the first input on the left. Crowd source. So we'll have to bring in the source, but I don't want to do that right just as yet. I, I want to show you this first. Then we have the state. So that's what this. We only have one state. We only have the walking state that I'm doing here. So let's hook that up to this. And then the fourth one is the transitions. So I'm not going to get into that. Now the crowd solver needs, we need to feed in the crowd source in order to get this um, uh, working to some degree. In order to feed this in here, I want you to remember, okay, I'll just put it down first. Um, we need to use a pop source. And you might be asking, why would we need a pop source? Pop sources for particles. Well, let me drop this down first. Let's go back up here uh, into the agents node. This agent is converting our mocap animation to one point. So we only have a single point. It's actually packing the geometry of this mocap, which has like a ton of points into one packed point. So really Houdini is only dealing with one particle. That's how it's able to optimize the simulation. So it's uh, for faster for for faster performance. Now, if we go over here into the crowds, which is where we set up all our crowd sourcing. Let's let's take a look over here. Uh, I'm gonna have to make these points bigger. Okay. 
Okay, so we can see here that each each uh, agent is only represented by one point. So if we dig deeper here, we have crowd source. We have 163 agents. Now that's because we painted this. Let's let's disable the paint. Now in the crowd source, we have chosen 200 agents. Let's put 50. If we come here and look at how many points we have, we have exactly 50 points. So any everything that the crowd solver is dealing with is in points. Now you might be thinking, so how is that relevant to anything? It, it's represented points. So let's go back in here. That means all the the pop notes, or at least most, of, like almost ninety percent of the pop notes, are compatible with the crowd solver. So this ends up to being really cool when we start manipulating the forces in the crowd states. How when we where they walk or where they cannot walk. So let's hook this up first. Let's hook this up to the crowd source and set up the set up the pop solve a uh, pop source. Now here we want all geometry because we want to pull in the crowd geometry. Use parameters. Uh, let's choose the SOP, which is if I go to the crowds.net, so that's what here. And then I'll have this listed conveniently right here. So this is something I like to do. I like to list everything over here. So I just wanted to show you that's this. So crowd.net, that's this. I'm going to choose this, accept, and we have a blob. So the reason I'm having this blob is because my crowd state is picking up the wrong, um, the wrong uh, agent clip. If I go like this, walk, it'll pick up the right one. Now I'm going to show you why. If we go all the way up, now this goes back to the agent that we were preparing in our mocap. So when we have our agent here, this agent node here is the one that converts our mocap animation, the raw animation data into an agent, into a packed point. You can see here, it bakes it into a clip name where we called walk. Now, if I put this as walking, it will be consistent with the, the agent clip that I have called it walking. Let's just choose walking as well. So let's this will ensure that everything is named uh, the same thing. So th this makes it a lot easier. But this is the one that gets baked. So this is the one that uh, the crowd solver is looking for. These, This one is the one that it's renaming it to a different clip name. I would just name it all the same. If you're going to go like walking, just name it walking everywhere. At least for the when you're preparing your agent. So let's go back to the crowd uh, crowd.net. Net. So now it's working properly. So if I put walk here, it's gonna we're gonna get a blob. That's because I renamed it correctly now. So it's all named walking. So we're nice and consistent. So I'm just gonna play it and just see what happens. Ooh. So look what we're getting here. It's like it's it's like it's admitting. It's like it's uh, creating a, a stream of ca uh, characters, instancing it all the way through. Now, that's because we're using a pop source. So this is consistent to what you have in a po uh, particle simulation. You would feed in the pop source here. And in this first tab here, we actually have impulse activation. So this is telling it, keep feeding particles from here. This is the emission source. This is where we're emitting more and more particles. Well, it makes sense if we were doing particles, but we don't want to keep creating new particles. In our case, is the particle represents an agent. So we don't want to keep instancing the same agent over and over and over. Otherwise, we're going to have a stream of agents. If it was a stream of particles in a pop net, that would make sense. So how do we fix this? In this birth here, well, why don't we just put zero, right? That that probably be the first thing that you come up with. Well, if you do that, nothing will spawn. Well, nothing's gonna get born because we have zero. Activate. We'll, we'll start giving birth to the crowd to our agents if it is set to one. And if it's set to zero, it's sort of like an on-off switch. If it's one, it'll start uh, creating new instances of of our particles. 
in our case, agents. I'm just going to say agents. So what we want is to give birth once on the first frame. So what we can do is a Houdini expression, dollar sign FF, which stands for the current frame, which is the detailed frame. There is one that is dollar sign F, which is current frame. You can use that too. Dollar sign FF is the, the frames in between the frames. It's the thing that you'll see when on the bottom corner of your screen, when the solver starts cooking, it'll go like solving frame number 1.25. It's the two five that you're going to get when you put dollar sign FF. If you just put dollar sign F, you're just going to get frame one, frame two, dollar sign FF one. So this guarantees that it will only give birth on the first frame and no more after that. So let's just play it. Okay. So we don't have a stream of a streaming army. We have one army. Okay. I'm going to take this uh, simulation and put a dop import node over here, over into our crafts. Remember, this is the one where we're, we're going to be rendering, not the actual simulation. We're going to take the simulation data and we're going to extract it and put it into our crowd's uh, geometry. So this would be more organized. So what we need is a dop import node. Now I'm going to add more forces into the crowd and um, change the path of how they walk, but I want to get everything like working first. Uh, second thought, I will use a dop IO because the dop import is mostly, it's, I, I usually use that one for RBD geometry. This one, I can actually select what kind of fields I want to bring in. So this would be a little easier for crowds. Okay. Let's put the render flag here on dop uh, IO for the dop network. Now that would be our .NET node. Let's go back over here. I'll show you that's, that's this node. That's, it's asking for this guy. So let's go back. .NET, and it's asking for this .NET node. Put that here. Now, what's the DOP node? The DOP node will be What's that asking for is this. It's asking for the crowd object. What object inside the dot net that you want to extract. So that's this data. You can also find out using the geometry spreadsheet. So select your dot net, bring up the geometry spreadsheet, come over here and you'll see the crowd object right here. So that's what it's asking for. So let's go back to the crowds uh, here and let's choose it here. You can also click and drag it over, but I'm just going to select it here. Uh, crowds.net and crowd object.net. Here's the dot net and we're looking for the crowd object right here. So we still don't see anything being extracted here. That's because we have to choose which field as well. And unfortunately, it's not available on the preset. So we'll have to do this manually. Let's press this. So once you press it, it you, you get something. This brings in everything, all the data, which is cool. You can clean up the attributes by narrowing down exactly the geometry that we're looking for instead of just bringing in everything from the simulation. So let's go the object name. Well, we know the object name. It's crowd object. Crowd object one. So it's just this name right here. And then what field? Well, okay. Let's go back up. I just want to show you. You select this. Come over to the geometry spreadsheet. Crowd object. Within that, you're going to have uh, here geometry. This is the field that you want to bring in, because this is what we're going to be rendering. You need some sort of geometry to render out. Let's come up here, here. So we're going to type in geometry. So this will bring this in. This just brings in more, a, a more specific type of data. So I'm going to have no change. Let's put down a file cache here, because it's a good idea to cache all this uh, all the simulation data. So this would go, this file cache would go right after the dot IO. You want to cache in all the simulation data because you don't want to keep recooking the crowd simulation. And it's a lot easier to use with fast loading. 
you do need to remember after you place this file cache, every change you make in the simulation needs to be recached. Otherwise, it'll just be replaying the old cache data in front of you. Uh, I like to take out the hip name simply because I have multiple hip files. So this allows me to interchange the cache between different hip files. I have like different versions. And I also have made a, a environment variable for the renders. So this goes to a different partition in my hard drive uh, that is actually an SSD. So I don't have that much room on my SSDs, but the SSDs run a lot faster, especially when you're file caching and you're reading and writing stuff. So I like to use the SSDs for reading and writing. Uh, I'm just going to give it a folder name, crowds, geo. So what this will do, it will uh, cache, run the simulation and cache it all in. So let's do that right here. So as this run, it runs pretty fast, right? Okay, so we have a really simple crowd simulation working right now. Now we know how to get the whole crowd simulation working from scratch. We need to add a bit more complexity to the scene to make it more interesting. I'll be adding some geometry like walls to prevent the agents from walking all over the place. Please join me in the next video where I cover avoiding obstacles for crowds in Houdini.